Welcome, everyone. My name is Maureen Antunes, Festival Director for Spark Animation, and I want to welcome you to this entry into our Meet the Filmmaker series, where we speak to filmmakers whose films have been selected into the festival. Very, very pleased to have with me today Etienne Guignard, the director of Still Alive, which was actually a winner of the music video category at this year's Spark Animation. Etienne, welcome to Spark. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Well, and thank thank you for spelling my name, French name, right. I any win for me. It feels like a small win, but I will take all the small wins. for this. <laughs> well, before we talk a little bit about Still Alive, I wanted folks to learn a little bit more about who you are because you're a really interesting artist and your your road to animation has not been like linear. And it's always really interesting to me when um, individuals and artists kind of take sort of like the back roads into their careers. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, where you grew up and how you started in animation? Okay, I, I would love that. Uh, so I was born too much time ago on a small French island called Réunion Island. For those who don't know this place, you should Google it. It's like a French Hawaii, and this is just the best place on earth. So basically, I grew up in the coconut trees, stuff like that. That was amazing. Then I went to Paris to study animation, or at least to study art in general, because I wasn't sure about animation at first. I've always knew I wanted to do something with my drawings because I've, I've always been drawing. But at first, I was like, let's try to do comic book. So I walked a little bit on some comic books and I realized that that wasn't the best way to pay the rent. So then I did a lot of internships in small animation companies in Paris. And one of those companies, they decided to hire me. So this is how I started my animation career uh, before the end of my studies. So the last year I had to do kind of a part-time animation company. Then I had to work on my graduation movie. Um, I've, started, I've started my career as a storyboard artist. And this is what I did for at least 10 years, actually. Uh, I've been mostly working on series you know, like all those billion of series that goes on television for little kids and stuff like that. So I spent five, six years working on a lot of different series in Paris, uh, such as Miraculous Ladybug or Lolly Rock. Then some more adult series, but it's mostly French stuff like, for example, Last Man. And then I decided I wanted to go to Japan. So I went a little bit... I spent six months in Japan to do a little bit of animation, but just a tiny bit. Uh, that was a lovely experience. This is when I realized that I wanted to travel. And I got super lucky because when I went back to Paris, out of nowhere, I, I got an email from Nickelodeon. They saw my stuff on internet, so they offered me to, to pay for my visa to go to Los Angeles. So then I went to Los Angeles. I worked for Nickelodeon. then. Uh, I was a huge fan of Steven Universe, the not kids, but the show, let's say, because it's for everyone. And I got super lucky because thanks to, I don't know, the universe or destiny or whatever, I got a chance to work on the final season of Steven Universe. So then I did that. Uh, then COVID happened. Then I went back to Paris. I worked on the um, season two of Arkham. No spoilers. And uh, this is when I had like my middle life crisis. I was like, okay, I've been working in animation for 10, like almost 15 years. I need to do my stuff. And I had a lot going on in my personal life too at this moment. So I was like, okay, I need, I need to do something on my own. Because if I keep, like, basically the idea was like when I was a kid, my dream was to do my stuff, you know, I, I wasn't, nobody is like, oh, my dream is to be someone on over people's dreams. Anyway, and so in France, we were very lucky because we have a very good status for artists, meaning that if you work four to five months a year, you're allowed to have unemployment money for five, six months. 
So I decided to do my hours, to do the five months of, you know, what you need to get the unemployment. Then uh, I had this amazing friend of mine, Horus, uh, the singer of Still Alive. And we decided that we're going to work together. So I went back on my island to work on this, like, music video slash short movie. Uh, and I decided that hopefully that would be the beginning of my next step in my career, meaning doing my stuff, meaning being director instead of a storyboard artist. And and then Canadian people saw it and they loved it. And here I am. Long story short. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's amazing. That's Thank you for sharing that because it is a really interesting path. And I think it's really interesting because I was going to ask you actually about Oris and how you two met and how that working relationship works because you're both from the same place and it doesn't sound like a giant island so you know but i also don't expect that you know everybody that lives there so can you talk a little bit about how you guys first met of course um so every christmas and new year's eve i go back on my small lovely island so it was in 2017 and a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend invited me to a new year's eve party uh with like swimming pool, coconuts. It was amazing. And this friend of a friend of a friend was like, oh, uh, let me introduce you to Oris. He's a friend of mine. He's an amazing singer. So I, no, he didn't tell me it was a singer. So I went to see the guy and I was like, oh, what are you doing? And he was like, I'm a singer. And then he was like, and what about you? And I was like, oh, I'm a cartoon artist. And then I looked him in, in his eyes and I was like, okay, one day we're going to walk together. And then alcohol happened, few months happened. And like a few weeks later, he sent me his music, you know, in internet. And I, and I gave it a shot and I was like, oh my God, this is just great. So I sent him my drawings and he loved it too. And we were like, oh, there is something, you know, we, we feel that we, we have the same roots and not just the coconut roots, you know, but the melancholy roots, stuff like that. And so he sent me a song and I loved it, but this is when I got my visa for the US. And because I was working under a visa in the US, I, I couldn't have time you know, to work on anything else because when you have a visa, if you stop working, you, get, you have to exit the country. So we, have kind of, we had to give up on the song. And then when I went back to France, uh, as I just said before, I was like, well, I need to do something on my own, you know? So I, I called him back and he was like, I'm so sorry because I just released my album. You know, there is no more song to put on music video. But I was like, man, please, let's, we have to do something, you know? And we talked and we talked and then he was like, okay, you know what? Um, maybe for my future album, I have some rough songs. And so he sent me, um, I'm not sure about the English word, but basically a first draft of a song without the lyrics, without anything, you know, just the first draft. And I loved it. So that was still alive. And so basically, uh, we what we did is that I told him what I wanted to put in my music video. He told me what he wanted to put in the song, in the lyrics. So we, we discussed it, you know. And at the end of the day, it was a very organic process because first I was like, okay, I love it, but maybe at the end I would need something more epic. Can you do that? He was like, okay, let's do that. He sent me something new. So then I drew new stuff on it and it was kind of a ping pong, you know, very organic. Um, yep. I think that's, that's the story of how I met <laughs> Oris. That's amazing. That collaborative process is not something that you hear about very often because usually when you come on board to direct a music video, you assume there's already music, lyrics, like the thing is done, it's given to you and you're like, okay, so I love this song. Let's put some images to it. But this sounds like it was, you were both sort of influencing each other and building the song together in a way. Yeah, exactly. And and But we were lucky because the f what he wanted to put in the song was very similar to what I wanted to put in the uh, pictures, you know. So it was it was kind of very easy. And the other thing is that you're absolutely right. Usually, when you work on a music video, 
you have like a, I don't know, like an advertising company that contacts you and they go like, oh, we have the song and you have to do it in three days. Whoa. And here I was very lucky because I, I arrived very early in the process of his new album. Mm-hmm. So basically, I had I didn't have any deadlines. And that was the dream situation, really. And and the other thing, too, is that Horus is an amazing human. He is really into collaboration. He is not like, you know, the, the guy that I want this, I don't want that. He's always open, you know, to discussion. And the same way I was open to his song, too, you know. So this is why I, I love to describe it more as a collaboration. It wasn't like me putting picture on the music or him putting music on the picture. It was really an equal collaboration to my mind. So yeah, thanks to the universe. I was super lucky to meet this person. So let's talk a little bit about the process of, you know, creating the music video. So, you know, you're working with Oris, you're, you know, exchanging ideas back and forth. Then you have, you know, a final concept on story. How do you start to actually like, direct how do you start to put the 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 film together because at this point now i'm thinking this is more of a film than really just i don't want to say just a music video but it feels like it's a little bit more than that i to me it's more yeah i mean it's more because there is a story even though it's very metaphorical you know there is um i'm telling something in this music video he is telling something in the song so the process is First, a lot of talking. Like, if you could see my WhatsApp, we have like hours, you know, of voice text, voice message. Really, we are, we are like too much talking, you know? And so that's a lot of talking about, I want to do that. What do you, what do you think about that? Okay. And then it's back and forth. Then I come up with some, just some quick illustration, you know, like concept drawings. And then I start the storyboarding process, mm-hmm. which is actually the, um, oh shit, how do you call the the big bone in the back? The, the structure of the movie, anyway. Sorry for my English, but... No, no, that's perfect. So the spin, right? Yeah, the spine. Okay, thanks, spine, sorry. So basically, the storyboard is the moment where I take my billions of ideas and I try, then I start really drawing on the music video, on the, on the song. And basically the storyboard is like the music video, but in very rough drawings. It's a first draft. And this is where it gets like playing with Lego. Mm. Because oh, no, this idea is too big for the chorus. Oh, oh mate, no, this is going too fast. I need to add some more. And it's really like cooking. And I, I, I love to spend a lot of time on the storyboarding because basically when the storyboard is over, this is what you're going to get. Basically, the, the music video is the storyboard, but with colors and every little drawings that are missing. So we discussed a lot before the storyboarding. So then when I sent the first draft of the storyboard to Horus, there is no, um, he, he knows already everything that I want to tell. So, and then as soon as he is okay with the storyboard, then I go like, like a monk, you know, I lock myself up with my computer for five months. And this is basically just me drawing. And then sometimes I I will send him some, you know, small sequences because he's curious, of course, and because I want to share, but basically as soon as we lock the storyboard, this is just a long ocean, ocean, sorry of drawings. And, and so was that how long it took you? Five months? So basically, um, yeah, so the, the important thing to know about this music video, Still Alive, is that this is something I did entirely alone. Well, I did anyone with me. I do, It was just me, myself, and I. <laughs> so the, the numbers I'm going to give you, they're not, you know, they're not going to be the same if I had people walking with me. So basically it was something like one month to do the storyboard. And then I think it was four to five months doing the actual drawings. So at the end of the day, it's something like five to six months. 
Wow. Okay, yeah. so you know, you've been sharing your process <laughs> with Oris along the way. Can you talk a little bit about I I don't know, were you in the room when you he first saw the the finished product or how did you share that with him? What was the feedback? Were there nerves on your side? You spent 6 months birthing this thing. Is he going to love it? So yeah, I mean, this is always a, a psychological disaster. Oh. When you spend five months on something, you just you go to the church and you pray God that everyone's gonna love it, you know, because it's just it's too much. Uh, no, we weren't in the same room, you know, because it's not. I mean, I can say a lot, but it's not like suddenly this is the last drawing and this is over. Sure. It's more like I've finished all the drawings. I finish putting them in colors. Then there is what we call the compositing. It's basically you take all of your drawings and then you're going to add a little bit of blurring or a little bit of lighting or a little bit of, you know, a, a sh shaking camera, a little bit of stuff, you know, like the the, the top on, on, on the cake. So basically it's more like, think about the plane that just, touch the ground, but then there is still a few weeks, you know, before the real stop. So basically when I sent over the, the final, final version, he already saw a pre-final version. So it's not like, there is not like something like a finish line, but well, when he saw the final products, it was, there were a little bit of tears, you know, joyful tears. Because again, he was super happy. I was super happy. And we both we both put a lot of very intimate and personal things, you know, in this movie. So there there was a lot of tears. <laughs> you know, it sounds like the whole thing was fairly challenging, but if you have to pick one thing that was particularly hard about making Still Alive, what, what do you think that thing would be? Okay. So again, remember that I was entirely alone. So my answer would have been completely different if I had a team. Uh, so one thing that was particularly challenging is when you're all alone, it's so easy to, you know, to turn crazy because when you're an artist, you're always doubting the doubts you have doubts. And at some points, the most challenging thing is to to have auto validation. Basically, because Monday I would be super happy about what I did. Then Tuesday I I, I would like okay I'm a, I'm a failure. Wednesday I was like well, I don't know. Then Thursday is super great. Then when, and and every day is different. So at some points, the most difficult thing when you're alone is that you you have to be like okay, is it good? Is it bad? I don't give a shit. Let's just do it. Let's just do this huge pilgrimage and let's stop asking myself if I'm good or if, do I deserve anything. Uh, this is not why I'm doing this movie. I'm doing this for, for and from my heart. And that's the only thing I have to keep in mind. And so first you have to, do, to, to, to reach these mindsets. That is very complicated, but you have to. And then... I had a five, four to five very good artist friends that I would, from time to time, I would send them a little bit of sequences I'm working on because they would reassure me. So basically, the most difficult part is not making the movie. The most difficult part is uh, validate yourself. That's... Yeah, that's what I've learned from this experience, which doesn't mean validate yourself doesn't mean that you have to think you're an amazing person. It's just, man, give you a break. Yeah, giving you a break. That's the most challenging thing. <laughs> that's, a, that's amazing insight and uh, notes for individuals that are, you know, creatives, because it is hard because a lot of the time when you're, you know, you're an animator, a lot of the time you are working on your own and that. I'm sure it creeps in all the time, not just when you're single-handedly animating a short film. I, I mean, I could quote two big philosophers on this one. 
first one Nike. Just do it. That's I mean this is stupid, but just think about it. Just do the stuff, okay? And the other one, uh, it's a French psychiatrist, and he wrote a lot about self-esteem because. Self-esteem seems to be the, the darkness of our generation. You know, everyone has a low self-esteem, yada, yada, yada. And the guy was like, if you have a bad self-esteem, you would think that the answer is to have a good self-esteem, which is not the good answer. To this guy, uh, the good answer to a bad self-esteem would be um, transparent self-esteem. You, you're not happy when you think you're good. You're happy when you stop asking yourself those kind of questions. Again, give me a break. That's the <laughs> best advice. This is welcome yeah. to our psychology session. That, Etienne is, is holding court. <laughs> give me a break and just do it. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, now the film is out there. You're share, you shared it with the world. People, other people are now loving it as well. You know, not talking about validation, but does that kind of, it, it, does it, it's like pat on the back. You did good. Yeah. No, no. That, I mean, that is important. I mean, that is important, um, especially the festivals, uh, because it's kind of, you know, recognition from professionals, artists, too, you know. Uh, and of course, that's important. You know, I, I'm like, first I'm doing it for myself. But of course, if you can get a little bit of success, this is how do you say in English, two birds, one stone, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is that to, to see that people love it, I mean, some people love it, it. Of course, it gives me strength, you know, to work on over music video or over movies, you know. So, I mean, yeah, this is important. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay, but I... What I think is particularly interesting here is that you you did a second music video, which is out now. And that, I'm sure you were working on that long before anybody saw Still Alive, because things don't happen overnight. So, I mean, without going too far into it, because I'd like people to go out and, and look for, for it. But how, like, when did you roll into song number two? And are you going to be doing the entire album? So, okay, okay. Uh, by the end of walking on Still Alive, I was like, wow, shit, this is too good. Then that was even before the end of the movie, you know, but I was like, wow, I, I, I feel that I'm, I am where I should be, you know, like walking on my stuff and, and getting like, personal stuff out of my chest. This is what I need to do at this moment of my life. So by the end of the song, not the song, but by the end of the walk, I was like, okay, I, I want to do another one. Uh, so I discussed it with Ois. And of course he was more than happy about this news. And I was like, okay, I, I've put a lot in this Still Alive movie, but I think there is more I can add to the plate. So I quickly came up with the idea that I, I, I want to do another movie that, that would be kind of a sequel. Not a sequel, because again, this is metaphorical and all this stuff. But I was like, I want to do another movie that you can watch with Still Alive. That can be, that form a whole picture. And, and so I was like, I want to do that. I'm not sure exactly what I want to tell in this second movie. So I need to give myself a little time first because I needed to recover at this time because that was too much. And then I needed to work again in the animation industry to get my new unemployment money. And so that led us to this year. So I work on the second music video and then I was like, okay, this, this is going to, I'm going to give you a scoop. Uh, I was like, I want to have a second one and there's going to be a third one next year. And the idea is that we can, so let's, we're going to talk in one year. Okay. Check my words. But the idea is that we're going to have those three movies and that's going to make kind of a short 10 min, 15 minutes movie by itself. And 
I think I've talked too much. I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because this is what I was asking about is, you know, this because you clearly started working on the second short before, you know, the world saw it because it, it was just recently released. And, that, you know, where are you going to do the entire album? So you've answered the question. That's fantastic. Actually, you know, that's funny because when I, when I start working on the second music video, that was when Still Alive started its live in festivals. So basically I was working on the second one and I would got some selection, some prices. So I was like, okay, let's rock, you know. <laughs> it's good motivation. It's good motivation, right? Of course. <laughs> so yeah, well, there is a second one and there's going to be, and maybe the second one will be in Spark Animation 2024. Who knows? I mean, cross finger, but there is a second one and there's going to be a third one too. Well, amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. The the film is really wonderful. And now that we know a little bit more about the backstory of how it came together, I think it feels a little bit extra special. So really, congratulations. It's great. It's amazing work. And I love the second film. I'm excited to see the third. I'm excited to see how it all comes together. Like huge, huge, huge achievement. Congratulations. It's it's been it's been so lovely too. This has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you can. I hope you can put the subtitles for my English. <laughs> not necessary. Not necessary. It's brilliant. <laughs> God, okay, cool. But Thanks. yeah, thank you so so much, and thank you for the second movie. I didn't know you saw it, so thank you. I did my research, and, and we'll link to it so folks can go have a chance to see it as well. But it, it, they're definitely worth checking out. And again, Etienne, thank you so much for your time. It's been really, really nice to talk to you. Thanks. Take care and see you maybe next year. Bye.